I want you to take a second and imagine if Hitler had had the internet and social media at his disposal. He used it to reach out to German citizens living in, in other countries and was able to encourage them to attack the governments of those countries. World War II might have had a very, very different outcome. Now this may, may sound hypothetical and far-fetched, but there are people today who believe that there is a threat that exists now that is equally dangerous. And this, and the group of people who believe in this do have social media at their disposal to further their cause. Back in February of 2015, a survey conducted by Pew Researching found that 84% of American citizens consider ISIS, or the Islamic State, as the single greatest threat to American stability and safety here at home, beating out Iran and North Korea as distant second and third options. By all intents and purposes, this fear has only grown. Since last February, there have been several terrorist attacks, attempts, or plots thwarted all over Europe and the U.S., which has led many to believe that this transnational group of radical Islamists may be unstoppable. The American public has been all too aware of the Islamist threat ever since September 11, 2001. However, there is a palpable feeling that the game itself has changed. ISIS is not Al-Qaeda. Perhaps it could be far more dangerous. As it is able, as it has mastered a marketing strategy that Bin Laden could never, social media. This speech is not aimed at being a historical piece on the group itself or a statement on the severity of the terrorist threat. Rather, it is simply an analysis of the group's use of social media and its implications in our time. Therefore, as I set out to gain this understanding, my research was guided by two questions. How effective has the Islamic State's use of social media, specifically tw Twitter, been? And what, if anything, can the United States do to deter this threat? Findings from the Brookings Institute show a startling trend in ISIS-related postings on Twitter. According to those findings, from September to December of 2014, there were already 46,000 Islamic State supporting or related Twitter accounts. During that window, only 1,000 of which were actually suspended by Twitter. These numbers are quite staggering. It is now October of 2015, and therefore, if we assume that these numbers have increased steadily, that would mean there are almost 100,000 ISIS-related Twitter accounts, most of which are active. This represents the incredible stream of information that ISIS has been able to create through the canals of social media. Now please pause this video, click on that link in the bio section, watch that video, and we'll be right back. Thank you. That video highlighted the effectiveness of their use of social media. However, what is the effectiveness of the practice itself? Several benefits for ISIS in using social media are A. The group can reach a wide range of people. B. The flow of information is very difficult to suspend. And C. Their message can be adopted by other like-minded Muslims and spread throughout the world. This may sound like a difficult feat for, for the most closely CIA-watched organization in the world. However, through the deployment of secret tactics, the Islamic State has been able to connect with thousands of troubled Muslims, primarily young men, who are willing to either travel to Syria and join the fight, or plan and execute lone wolf terror attacks in the U.S. and Europe that ISIS may fund themselves. This tactic is of such great importance to ISIS that they have developed their own social media department. Now, it sounds kind of funny, a band of terrorists having a social media department. However, laugh not. ISIS's social media department has been outflanking the counterterrorism measures of the United States government for months. Simply put, the U.S. cannot stop the flow of information that ISIS is putting out on Twitter and other social media sites. The ISIS social media department was run by an American-born terrorist named Ahmed Abu Samra. Abu Samra specialized in the exploitation of social media, specifically Twitter, for the movement of a radical agenda. Abu Samra was killed by a U.S. airstrike back in June. However, it is unclear how many people he had working for him, it is estimated to have been in the thousands. Despite his death, 
His department is still very much in business. It oversees the acquisition of Western computer systems and uses them in secret facilities throughout Syria. To give an example of the effectiveness of Abu Samra's efforts, we should examine the case of Usama Rahim. Rahim was killed by counterterrorism officers just before he was to carry out an attack within the borders of the United States. It was later revealed his target was law enforcement, who he referred to on social media as the boys in blue. Online, he used code words when communicating with his network of terrorists. He referred to the act of killing police officers as going on vacation. Law enforcement officers uncovered thousands of messages he had been sending via Twitter between himself and a group of like-minded individuals with connections to Syria. This is telling of what ISIS's intentions are. They know they don't have to reach every single at-risk indivi at individual. They simply have to create a buzz off which thousands of disillusioned Muslims will come together in what they believe will culminate in violence. In response to the Islamic State's early social media presence, the State Department was sharing certain information with companies such as Twitter and Facebook in hopes of helping them suspend ISIS-related accounts. However, it, it quickly became apparent that the extent of their presence online was simply too great to stifle in this manner. Later on, the U.S. government got the idea of using ISIS's own tactics against them, the use of propaganda. Now, it's important to remember that propaganda is not always untrue or bad information. It's simply information that is intended to sway a public. What the State Department is saying is not untrue by any means. The State Department began to create its own Twitter pages geared towards young Muslim men. However, instead of portraying ISIS as this great Muslim army and the Islamic State as this great caliphate in Syria, they showed the reality. They showed ISIS fighters killed in U.S. airstrikes. These graphic images included fighters with half of their bodies blown away, their heads blown off, or they were burned alive along with many other grisly sites. It is unclear how effective any of these social media tactics implemented by the State Department have actually been. By all indications, jihad is only a growing topic on social media as the months go by. The threat from the Islamic State is viewed by the general public as the greatest to this nation. This threat manifests itself greatly on Twitter as well as other social media sites. ISIS is exceptionally shrewd in its efforts to inspire and recruit young Muslims to their cause. Up to this point, the U.S. State Department has been outflanked by the terrorist organization. However, there are many areas in which the government could improve in order to protect the lives of young and minds of young Muslims as well as its own citizens. This must be done as this threat is imminent and dire. Thank you.